Okay, um, Guardians, guys. Wow. Man, oh, man. I pulled some numbers. I mentioned earlier they've got six straight games with ten hits. Mm -hmm. Bieber looked like Shane Bieber. Five, five nothing win yesterday as they won another series. They're now 4-0-1 in their last five series. Bieber was Bieber. Velocity was back. He had nine strikeouts. That's a season mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. The hits keep coming. Mm -hmm. Can can it, provided they keep him. Can Shane Bieber be the guy he was yesterday for the rest of the season? Ooh, that's a tough one. That's a tall task. Uh, you, you know, you, you pitch. Um, I don't know how easy it is to maintain velocity. I don't know how easy it is um, to, to, to continue to throw the ball at that velocity and strike a lot of people out. Um, I heard the, the, the goal of pitching is not trying to strike people out. It's just hitting your spots, making sure you locate it and right and stick it to the game plan. But I think, you know, if he stays on the outside of the plate like he's so good at doing, he never really seems to give you too much to hit. If you watch these swings right here, you know, the hitters are up there. These are perfectly placed pitches. The guys don't have not much to, you know, they're not getting the meat of the bat. Look, everything is away. Everything is just off the outside corner of the plate. You can't drive anything. And even if you do hit it, it's going to be a weak grounder or, or a little pop fly. So, you know, that's his game. And if he can still consistently make sure he's hitting those locations, he could be Shane Bieber for a, for a little bit of time period to stretch. And I think doing that against the Astros, I think that that literally moved his stock up a little bit, especially when you get nine K's and only three hits. That's something that you look at. And I think that he can he can match he can match that spot to spot. It is yet to be seen if he could do that for the entire rest of the season. You know, I'll take it a step further than that. It was just two starts ago to where Shane Bieber had his worst start probably of his career. I think he gave up like 12 hits. Got pounded by got, the Orioles. Got pounded. And so since then, you know, when, when you're that dude, Jay, when you're considered one of the game's greats, when you're an ace, there's something internally that you have that's a little bit different from everybody else. And you could just see he was chopping at the bit to get back out there. You know, he talked about it after his last start, that he was ready for that start after the worst start of his career. And then you come out versus the Astros, seven pitches into the first inning, he's in the dugout already. Yep. And that was significant to me because if you – uh, look at what two of the three games the Guardians was down 4 one five one five, early yeah. you know they were struggling to get out get out the uh, first inning early so to see him have early command like that to see him like seven pitches boom I'm in the dugout he, he was painting the outside corner all game long Bieber still has it Bieber is still that guy and I think that he can maintain it and you know I'm gonna take it a step further as we as we continue this argument, and I, I'm glad I'm here talking to you about this. I told G this Saturday, Thursday when J Ram hit those three home runs, right? I think it set the tone. I think it changed the energy. When your best player sets the tone like that, the rest of the troops are galvanized. They're feeding off that e energy. You come back Friday, and this team never led, but they they kept clawing back. They kept staying hanging in there. And then you beat the, the defender world champs uh, in 14 innings the way that they did. Saturday was what Saturday was. But then Sunday was a statement, a 5 nothing shutout statement. Yep. I truly believe now the Guardians have turned the corner for real. Yeah, I think it's, that's happened May 25th. If you go back, um, I think it was it, – it, I think it all goes back to, the, oddly, when Will Brennan hit the bird. We talked about this on Friday. Like The team – has just completely turned the corner. They've been a different, they've won six of eight. I think they've won maybe 11 of 16 or something like that. They, they've won four straight, four out of the last five series they've won. The one they didn't win, with, they split with the Twins. Uh, here's what I'll say about Bieber. He looked different yesterday. He did. Now, we, we talked about on the air last Friday about some comments that an executive made, or maybe maybe this was on Channel 3. I can't remember where I had this no, conversation. No, we talked about it. Okay. There was a, a, a major league executive was quoted by a very reputable baseball reporter as saying, the Guardians aren't going to get a lot for Shane Bieber. He's just, he's you know, he's not Cy Young anymore. And trust me, Shane Bieber read that. Oh, yeah. Shane Bieber heard that. Shane Bieber knows what the Orioles did to him. And I think what we saw yesterday was the bounce back 
of a prideful, talented pitcher who maybe had lost a sliver of focus. In pitching, pitching, I always used to say, is like driving at the Indianapolis 500. You can't afford to blink for one second. No. If you do, you're into the wall. For a 500-mile race, it is it it requires every single bit of all the focus you have, and you slip for one second, and you're in the wall. It's the same thing with pitching. Most games come down to one swing. One, two runs, that's it. That's the difference. He, he had a little bit of extra jump on his fastball, which is what I really wanted to see. There were a couple of times that his fastball exploded through the zone. It was coming 93, and it seemed to get that extra hop into the glove. His curveball was spectacular. That's the Shane Bieber curveball. Yeah. That's why he won a Cy Young. That's why he was an All-Star Game MVP. It's the mix of the devastating curveball and the exploding fastball. Both have to be there for him. Because if one isn't, the team in the dugout notices after one inning, oh, his fastball doesn't have its normal life. Oh, his curveball doesn't have that sting bite to it at the end. So you just sit on whatever his best pitch is that day. And when teams start sitting on pitches, they're going to hit you. It's the guessing game that leads guys to Cy Young Awards. And yesterday, I watched the Astros hitters, and it's really evident in this clip. They weren't sure what was coming. They were frustrated. Is it going to be the life fastball? You know, that live electric fastball? Or is it going to be that curveball that's unhittable? Yeah. Out of the zone. So, I think if he can maintain that focus, the talent's there. I've never doubted his talent. Guys have bad outings. Here's his numbers. So, when I read the question, I'm like, wow, it's not like he's been three and seven. Because the question was, are we going to see the Shane Bieber we saw yesterday or the guy we've seen all year? Shane Bieber's been very good this year. Very good is being very nice. No, it's not. He's been solid. <laughs> but he's not. His he ERA, hasn't been the ace Shane Bieber. His ERA minus the Orioles start is 2.75. And I'm a 10 if you take out the fact I'm 5'8". <laughs> Bro, it's, it's, it's the sample size. You, <laughs> pitchers are going to throw a pig. You're 5'8", no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, every day. Shooting the ball, rebounding the ball, dribbling the ball. You're stuck at 5'8". Facts. This guy, minus the Orioles start, which was everybody would tell you it's the worst start of his career. He's 5-3, and three, and three games he left with the lead. Yeah, he hasn't been bad. He so just if the bullpen great. did their damn job. Boston gang. He's 8-3. and three. Boston gang. And I'm not asking any questions about an eight and three pitcher. Now, if, 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 I get it. He's gotten some bad breaks. Another one of the questions that we had on the Guardians this year is what's the difference between last year's team that was 36 and 29 at the 65 game mark and this year's team that's 31 and 34. So what is the difference? Why are they five games behind last year? Well, that's pretty simple. Everything that could go right for the Guardians last year went right. They won the one-run games. They won the close games. Mm -hmm. Their last three losses, no, of their last four losses, three of of them are one run. The other one was two runs. They did something Friday night. I can't, I tried to verify this stat. I couldn't get it verified. I saw, I read it Saturday morning. Friday night, the Guardians did something that's never been done in the history of Major League Baseball. They came from behind and won a game five times after the seventh inning. They came from behind. Think about that. Yeah, they did. Five times. And they ended up winning the game. And it was so funny because as I'm watching this crazy marathon go on, I literally was saying... This is the game that builds the season. But you got to win it. You can't come back five times and end up losing. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. You got to. They it. trailed five times. Okay, here's the stat. This is this not this okay. different comeback stat. Okay, what does that one say? This is about the win on Friday night. Yeah, that's the one good. I'm talking about. Yeah, that's one. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. They're the only MLB team, MLB team in the modern era to erase a deficit in five separate innings in the seventh inning of a game. After the seventh inning of the game. They, that, that's, so that's so you were massive. trailing in the seventh, the eighth, 
the ninth, the tenth. There were some innings and extras where neither team scored. Yes. So they were tied. Exactly. And then obviously in the fourteenth. Uh, so I mean, that's that. What what does that say? That says that the DNA of this team mm -hmm. is the same as it was last year. We're not quitting. We're not going away. We're going to keep clawing. We're going to keep fighting. And now the bats are talking. I think things have fallen into place. I, I, if I'm Tito, I feel pretty damn good about where I am on, on this month. And I guess that brings the conversation full circle. We're talking about Shane Bieber still having his stuff. Sure. Shane Bieber still being that. He's only got three losses and we're in June. Right. Still being that lights out ace. And then you combine that with, with uh, Jose Ramirez did Thursday. And with those two guys pretty much being the face of your organization. Right. That type of performance from both of them, it galvanizes the troops. And sure. it, gives, it gives them a boost of energy that they definitely needed. You look at the game Friday. What's his name? Christian Javier. I think before that game, the Guardians had only scored one earned run against him, I think, in his career. Right. That, that was a crazy stat. So you're looking at Shane Bieber pitch, pitching the way that he's pitching. J-Ram got his back going. And I think collectively, you see it trickling down to everybody else. Everybody's starting to collect hits. The bullpen was a little better, you know, because yeah. the bullpen blew Shane Bieber's last start versus Boston. They did. I, mean, I tell you what, man, I need to ask you all a question because I, I know the people in the, uh, in the front office is looking at this. Hey, I need, I need some answers on this. So, I don't know what the correlation is. You know, I like to look at, you know, is this just a, a, a mirage or is this something that's real? Um, progressive Fields' attendance is up. Progressive Fields has, has combined attendance of 155,580, the highest attendance in the six-game stretch of the whole stand, lasting uh, six or more games since August um, 3rd, um, 2018. So this has been a while since they had this. this well, this, some of those seasons were COVID. So. Yes. 35,000, the largest crowd of progressive this season, and the overall attendance has been up almost 28% over last year. Now, I'm trying to figure this What's out. What's the average attendance? Does it say there? Uh, the average attendance uh, for the Guardians is about 21,000. Okay, that is up because they've been in like the 17 Cities. range. So, thirty-five. you get 35,000 against a team not named the Yankees, not named the Red Sox. So I'm like, okay, that's kind of crazy. I thought, man, is it interleague? No, it's it's you know American League and American League. So they're the World the Series champs. They are. They're the champs. That, so that helps. That helps. But you thirty five thousand fans love to come out and boo them too. They love to hate them. Thirty five. They're, the, they're I, the Houston Astros. Yeah, and and, and, and it's up twenty eight percent over last year. My question is, what what is it? What, what is why, last year they had a better record? We talk. We'll talk about that coming up. Yeah. Last year they were putting more runs on the board. This year there were there were times where they we talked about them being out of it, seven eight games out of five hundred. But for some reason, do you believe it's? I, I don't know. Is is it the, the 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 new stuff they put in the ballpark? Well, no. You know is, what? Is it what, what they're doing as far as a marketing that standpoint? That fifty dollar uh, standing room only package. I know is so many people wildly popular. Yeah. I do too. It sells out within minutes of it going on sale each month. Because it's 50 bucks and it gets you into every single game. It's crazy. You're getting a month pass, which is usually about 12 games, 13 games a month. For 50 bucks, that's averaging $4 a ticket. You go every it's the game. the best deal in want. baseball. Now, I don't know how many, what are there, 2,000 of those they sell? Yeah, and I bet you whatever the difference was. G, you said the average tennis was about 21,000. You said 17 last year. I think it was 17 year. or 18 yeah. last year. So that's, that's half year increase right there. Yeah. And now well, the problem what? is that's not a lot of money. I mean, it's it, it, if it's four dollar tickets, you can't you can't build a major league roster on four dollar tickets. Right, right. So but you it, make concessions. It, it boosts. It does, but the shorter games means the concession sales. I would love to see what their concession sales are now compared to last year. Yeah. Because if the games are seven ten percent shorter, that's and, ten percent less time you have to buy beer, and, to buy hot dogs, and they cut you off the beers. I believe at was seven inning. They used to, but I think I, I I'm pretty sure. I think it's later now. I feel like it is later. I've been at games where I've seen them. I, I think say at the top is. of the eight they yell last call now. Where before I felt like it was earlier. I could be wrong, but I think at the at the last game I was at, I remember them saying in the top of the eighth inning, <clears throat> this is the last call. And yeah. I think that used to be used to be before the eighth inning. 
I will say this, shout out to the Cleveland Guardians concession staff because they've become more efficient. You know, we talk about the game speeding up and, and not being able to enjoy the ballpark experience. Yeah, they're, you know, they're hopping a lot more. They are really efficient. They're very courteous. They're very nice people. They get yeah. you in. They get you out, get you back to your seat. They do a great job. Yeah, I mean. They do a great job. I, I, I went and got my famous blueberry beer. I love the blueberry beer. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. At Progressive Field. Yeah. I was in and out of the line in less than 10 minutes. So Good. Good. You know. I, 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 when I was watching the game, I'm like, it's kind of loud. <laughs> it's like, yeah, there were like, there were nice crowds was, there. So you and know, Friday's game was, was it's the game of the year. Yeah. I, I, Friday's okay. game was Write it down right now. There will not be a better baseball game this calendar year than Friday night's Guardians Astros. Real, game. real quick, two things on Friday's game. One, shout out to Bull for bringing his entire Little League team. I saw he took his to team the there. game. What Curtis, a memory! What a Curtis, memory! Curtis, our guy with the Guardians, hooked him up with 25 tickets. Wow. They were sitting in a pretty good section. All 24 kids and parents stayed till the end of the game. No kidding. Those are 9, 10, and 11-year-olds if I'm – I'm 99% sure that's the yeah. age range. I think Aaron's just turned 10, so 10, 11, or 9, and 10. Stayed 14 innings. Wow. Kudos to them. That takes a lot of – Because uh, – Let's the, say Aaron was supposed to come to the USFL the, game the next day. He was still exhausted from the game before. Oh, so he didn't go? Aaron did not make it to the USFL game. But it's because he was at a 14-inning Guardians game. Yeah. And they played 14 innings in four hours. Yeah. Like, that's still hard to that's fathom crazy. that in today's it is. world. Yeah, yeah no, crazy. that it is, is the baseball we get to. And secondly, on one thing on Friday's game, I want to ask you about, Jay. What was Dusty Baker thinking? I don't know. Brennan I don't know. Intentionally walking him for David Fry. Now, I, we'll take, I, listen, I, I'll never we'll understand take that. I have no idea at all why he did that. Because earlier in the game, in a similar situation, he made the right call. Yep. Very similar situation. It was extra innings. I don't know. Dusty Baker's one of the best to ever do it. Yeah, but, you know, Friday and I think Sunday, and it's crazy he brought that up. His pitcher was getting beat up on, on Friday. Yeah. Javier was. He yep. started to lose it in the fifth. He left him in the game. The pitcher Sunday was getting beat up early, and Dusty just left him in the game. So, Jay, do they, like, have a weak bullpen? Were their bullpen they're, still worn they're out from Friday? Like, 60% what was it? of their starting rotation is on the DL. Mm. So they're uh, they're thin on arms, and sometimes you it's called just letting a guy eat innings. Even though when it's when it's when it's five nothing and Bieber's throwing the way he's throwing, Dusty wisely looked out there and said, "I'm not going to chew up my bullpen. I'm going to let my starter stay in the game, eat some innings, get the work because we're not winning this game." Yeah. Sometimes you just wave the white flag because you know it's not going to happen. Or I'm, I'm not I'm not saying you're actually giving up. But you're playing percentages at that point. To your point, he's a veteran skipper. He's won a World Series. He's been around a long time. Hell, I think he's I, he's the winningest active manager. He's the yeah. only guy that active. has yes. only guy that has more wins than Tito. So it's like he he looked out there yesterday. He said, "You know what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keep going. We're gonna lead this. See us what it he, is." Yeah, so. yeah. Now sometimes um, I've seen managers do it out of spite. <laughs> like when it's nine to two in the fourth, you just get smoked, and you you're still that. letting that guy just get pounded, and it and there's just you know that he's it's it's almost like he's like sending a message like that's, that's you know called, that, you embarrass me and I us embarrass you I'm gonna embarrass you it, it's yeah. called enjoy your enjoy your outing it's called the scarlet letter <laughs> yeah you're wearing <laughs> you just it gotta wear that <laughs> you know I was at Elijah Morgan's first major league appearance it was the game a couple of years ago where I think it was last year against Toronto it was raining sideways and it was like 35 degrees and it rained the entire game and Morgan was I was excited because I, I, I'd been following his career and I was excited to see him pitch in the bigs. And he came up and he got smoked. And Tito just let him go. He let him stay out there. And, and now, in that, I, I was vehemently disagreeing. I was watching it with some real hardcore baseball fans as well. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is how you damage a kid's psyche. Like, this is, this is his welcome to the big league moment. And you're letting him... Toronto's hitting home runs, and it was windy as hell. The flag, I'd never seen the flag at Progressive Field stand out like that. And he just let him, let him go. I can't remember how long he, paid, he stayed out there, but it felt like it was five innings. It was probably only like three and a quarter or whatever, but three and a third. I would have got him out right, almost right away because the situation was, was eating him up. And that was the series where the very next day, it was 55 and sunny, and they canceled that game. Yeah. And I, my buddy's the pitching coach for the Blue Jays. And he's like, what the hell's going on in Cleveland? We played through the worst weather I've ever played a baseball or seen a baseball game played in yesterday. And today it's 55 and beautiful and sunny. And they just canceled the game. It was, I, I, I still don't understand that. I don't know why they made that call, but.
I got two super chats, Jay, then we'll get to the next Guardians topic and then finish the show with a little basketball talk. Uh, first super chats from Dog Pound Derek. He says, he didn't get to come say hi to the crew at the USFL game, but he did make Boogie shake his hand for making him root for a Pittsburgh team. <laughs> Tell him I'm sorry my son wouldn't let his hand go. Autism is a different beast. I, I'm sure Boogie did not mind the least bit. Uh, and thanks for coming. We appreciate that, Absolutely. Derek. Secondly, from Professor Chaos, uh, last Shane Bieber question is the super chat. Then we'll move on to Guardians at 65 game point this year versus last year. Professor Chaos wants to know if Shane Bieber starts looking more like he was in this last game, do we trade him now or keep him for the playoffs with yeah. his value going up? So I've made the determination. I said this on, I think, last week's show, last Friday's show. I'm not trading him. I'm not trading him. And, and here's why. You're in a division that it's not going to take much to win. They should win this division. They are the betting favorite now to win this division. Mm -hmm. Even with the horrible start, when we didn't have any guys hitting over 210, mm -hmm. we're in position now. We're a game and a half out. We've turned the corner. We're starting to play much better baseball. With that guy, the way he pitched yesterday, we have a chance in any series because he's going to get two starts, and Tristan McKenzie will likely get two starts. These are Cy Young caliber pitchers. Now, I know Tristan got pounded Saturday. It is what it is. Friday, or His first start, he looked great. You know, was he working off rust? I don't know. He's been prone to give up the home run. That's how Houston got him. I just think that when you have a team that has two A-plus pitchers on it or front-of-the-rotation guys on it, you can be in position to win. And I had this conversation with one of my teammates at my game Saturday. He was like, no, we got to deal him. And I said, no, we don't. We've done that going back to the 90s. That's what we've done. When guys come up on their contracts, we trade them. Has it ever led to a World Series? No, it no. hasn't. It hasn't at all. It hasn't. We traded Frankie wisely and got a lot for him. But this is different because he's a pitcher. Momentum in baseball is today's starting pitcher. And that's it. Who's going for you? If you've got a guy that you can give the ball to, that you feel gives you a chance to win the game, you have a big advantage over, the, over your opponent. They don't have the kind of team that's going to slug their way to a World Series like the Astros did last year. They lost the Yankees series because the Yankees hit a whole hell of a lot of home runs. And we don't have a home run hitting team. But do I like my chances at a World Series with Shane Bieber not on this roster? No, I don't. <clears throat> so let's, when you get, when you're in the position to get to the dance, let's go for it. So today is June 12th, right? Yep. Today, the Cleveland Guardians record is two games greater. It's two, day, two games better than it was on this day last year. No. no. Yeah, last year we were 29. We were 29 or something. We're 31 and 34 right now. No, we were 36 and 29 36 last and 29 year. 29 last 65 year. games in, we were 36 and 29. All right, I got to double check now, my numbers because no, no, no. I just looked it up. I thought we had 29 wins on this day last year. On this day last year, but they hadn't played 65 games. Yeah, so remember you guys are both both right. Yeah, last okay. year was plus last year the schedule. What happened with the schedule? They at had the beginning? all the rain. Remember they like six they rainouts. Six rainouts. If they're so. only five games behind where they were last year. No, no, at the yeah, 65 game mark. Earl's right. They had 29 wins on June 12th last year. Yeah, but we didn't Through have 65 six. games. They had 36 right. wins. So okay. uh, that's an apples to apples comparison, right. so, not the calendar, the number of games. Right. So the, the point I'm getting to is knowing that we're in a better situation this year than we was last year, despite everything that happened. Jay, shout out to the Durant, to the Toronto Blue Jays for coming back yesterday, putting us one yeah, and a half back of right. Minnesota. You're right. We have to keep our eyes on our own paper. We have to look at our situation and not the total landscape of Major League Baseball. You're right. We play in a weak division. We're probably the best team in a weak division. And and looking at how everything plays out, we talked about this last week. Me or you don't trust Minnesota starting pitching to stay, you know, pitching at the pace that they're at right yeah, now. They're gonna they're gonna have a fall. They're off. gonna come up down to reality. We know who the Cleveland Guardians are. And so I think that the confidence is being built up right now. We're gonna go out, possibly win our division, and when you have Shane Bieber, Tristan McKenzie, you have a chance in every single game. You're right. And then when you look at the long, young guys like Bybee and Logan Allen, I think they're going to continue to progress as the season goes along. I just think it's the perfect storm for us all to kind of like collectively relax, exhale, 
and just let this thing play itself out because it's looking better than it did to I, me I last year. I will say this. I will say this. The same way we so we look at other teams and say, yeah, their pitching won't hold out. The way they look at the Guardians is, yeah, this is a nice little run, but these sticks is not going to keep up with this pace. We know what they are. They do. Oh, they do have great pitching. They do got some young guys. But the prevailing thought process around the league is, yes, they can get that off. But when it comes time for the nitty gritty and we talk about October baseball, we talk about September baseball It's getting cold outside. Guess what? It may be something to this, maybe something to the thought process that the, the Guardians are a warm weather team. It's cold. It just it, it's not a coincidence. We had our best weather ever for like the last two weeks because it's been beautiful outside. We finally got rain today. But there is no coincidence the fact that those sticks are lighting up right now and teams are looking at them like, okay, that's cool. You could do that, you know, June, July, cool. But when you come into October, traditionally, they have not been able to get well, enough run support. Historically, good pitching always tops good hitting. Mm -hmm. Always. Um, so, with that being said, if you have aces like a McKenzie and a Bieber that can handle – half the workload in a playoff series or better, right? You're just in a position to make a run. If you take Bieber off this roster, they're not making a playoff run period. They're not. I'm sorry. They might win a series. They might be competitive in the, in the CS, but you're not winning an American league pennant with the pitching staff they have today minus Shane Bieber. They're not. I agree with Jay on that because we all know come, you know, playoff baseball, the long ball is king, right? It helps. And yeah, it when, helps. When you have pitchers like Tristan McKenzie and Shane Bieber, I kind of trust them guys more because veteran hitters like the Yankees hitters, they're going to scout these young pitchers that we have and probably light them up. But if I got a Shane Bieber and a Tristan McKenzie, I trust their stuff and I trust the experience a little bit more come to playoffs when I know – the long ball is 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 more of an impact on the outcome of a game than it is right now today. We're Percent in the age of analytics. Yeah. There's no question. Everything that's done in baseball is a product of a number. Yeah. That tells you what to do, and so there's a number for everything. So this is my plea to the Guardians, to turn off and Antonetti and the and the brain trust, which I think is the best in baseball. I do. Run the numbers on this team making a deep playoff run with Shane Bieber and then run the numbers on this team making a deep playoff run without Shane Bieber. And I know that when you're in a mid-market to small market like the Guardians are, you always have one eye on this season and one eye on the future. Mm -hmm. And you can't let Shane Bieber hit free agency and get nothing for him. I understand that. But you can trade him like you did with Frankie at the end of this season. So, so a team gets a full year of Shane Bieber next year. But let's keep this train going. What if they say, what if they say it's a 12% chance that we make a deep run without Shane Bieber? With Shane Bieber, it's like 16%. You go. You go with Shane. You go. I mean, whatever gives you the best chance of winning. Here's the thing. We've traded players, great players, before their contracts were up for 25 years. Now, that is, that's basically allowed us to stay at the top end of the talent cycle. Relevant, 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 relevant. But what if in some of those years, instead of dealing them early, you actually got four years out of a player that you signed a four-year contract to? What a novel concept. <laughs> right. In Cleveland, when they sign someone to a five-year contract, I always say, oh, that's a three-year. I right. just believe in, in, in when it comes to Shane Bieber, this is not a, a addition based on subtraction, right? Like you're no, not going to get make us better. Now. It's not going to make us better now. And I'm not worried about the future. I'm trying to go win a World Series right now. now. So I'm I with you win on now. that. Like you have to keep him on this roster. If he continues to pitch this way, his value is going to go up and it's probably going to be some move out there that might spark your interest. But you have to consider, OK, where, where this team was last season versus where this team is this season. And with Shane Bieber, to your point, your chances of winning the World Series is greater than it is without him. And I don't care if it is 12% without and I'll 16 percent with. I'll take the extra take four percent so, chance. So y'all so y'all would say that we so y'all would say that you guys are for keeping Donovan Mitchell then. 
Well, the difference there is because now, <laughs> now here's the difference. Here's the difference. Donovan Mitchell wants apparently wants out. Well, Shane I mean, Bieber isn't begging anybody to be on the I was going to say, Shane Bieber, he's really good because he don't say nothing. He just go out and pitch, right? And that's what it should be. That's I so, mean, he, he ain't hanging out with Gary Cole, taking I, selfies, I, talking but, about, but, but yeah, I love New York. The crowd there is so yeah. great. But, what but, a hype atmosphere. But for yeah. both players, it is a foregone conclusion that they won't be in Cleveland. We, we kind of know that. I'm not. I, I'm Donovan Mitchell's gone. I, I've already... I, you know. and, and I don't think they're going to pay Bieber. Even if even if Bieber is lights out, they can't pay him. They're nope. not paying Bieber but, no matter what. No, Bieber's gone. So they're gone. But, but why only get three and a half years out of Bieber instead of four? I agree. Look, if you can you look get, up their record last September? Can you c- c- call like, up the like Guardians calendar from just last in September? September? Yeah. Yeah, give me one sec. Because if you guys remember, they went into a series against the Twins, I think in the beginning of September, and they were like, a game and a half up or two and a half up. It was very, very close. It was very close. And they went bananas. They won like 17 of 21 or something crazy. Yeah, okay. You ready for this? Yeah. So, entering Friday, September 9th of last season, right. they were 70 and 65. Okay. 70 and 65, heading into a series against Minnesota on the road. And that series started Friday. February 9th, 70 and 65. Yeah. They ended the season 92 and 70. They finished the season 22 and 5. Okay, now, if you trade Shane Bieber, that doesn't happen. If you trade, so let's just say that Bieber's contract was to end next season, or it was going to end this season, Mm -hmm. and they still had him on their roster. Mm -hmm. And the trade deadline's August 1st. Mm -hmm. So you're making a judgment, you're making a snapshot judgment on August 1st. Where is this team on August 1st? Well, hell, on September 9th of last year, they were five games over 500 and had a very small lead against Minnesota. I remember that series. If they had been swept in that series, they would have left Minnesota and they would no longer have been in first place. They went 22-5 and five from there and it propelled them into a run that gave us the Rays excitement Mm-hmm. I don't want to steal that from this fan base. <clears throat> Look how much fun that two-week stretch was, the Rays series and the Yankees series. And you know we what? don't get that if we trade Shane Bieber. I this agree. Year. And, like, I, I hear you, G, but you made the correlation to the Cavs, right? Right. The Cavs had a great regular season. We seen a 71-point game. Mm-hmm. We seen Jared Allen in certain spots do his thing. They dropped the we, we egg seen, in the playoffs. We seen Garland drop 50. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we seen all these young guys – who didn't have playoff experience kind of fold and choke Mm -hmm. when the playoffs came. I'm not saying Logan Allen uh, and Tanner Bybee won't be great long term, but based off what I just seen with the Cleveland Cavaliers, give me my veterans that I know is going to show up and show out. So I can't, I can't trade Shane. I just can't do it. I can't either. We just went through a season here in the city (laughs) <laughs> where we've seen it. I, yep. I, just, I just thought I, saw, I, I thought of it in my, in my head, and, and there's probably no – There's first of all, it's two different sports, but the, the parallels and the contracts – No, there, there's, there are some there's, similarities, there's some, uh, but there's also, there's also at play how much power the actual NBA players have right. to where they can force teams' yeah, like, hands before, they, before the contract is out. And, t- and I'll, give, I'll, give, I'll give Bieber credit on this. A lot of times people give people – um, bad raps when they're athletes, right? The fact that pitching is one of the most mentally taxing, emotionally taxing positions, it, it, other it, that and quarterback, to, for you to be playing not knowing your future is rough. I was just talking to my dad about this. I said, can you imagine? He's going home every day knowing that, that the team he's pitching for, he's putting it all out there for, isn't going to pay him. How, that feels... That feels crazy, Jay. Like, sure. like if you are, um, if you, we all, we all espouse to be great at what we do. Like, we want to be great on this show. Can you imagine coming here and just doing everything you can, just every single day, and then knowing in the back of your mind, you're producing and you're helping the team and be successful, but they're not going to, they're not going to reward you, or they don't respect. It ain't respect. It's a financial thing. Sure, it goes to the business nature. No, of it, money but, equals respect. But but yeah. they feel like that's the ultimate form of respect. Yeah. How I much put, do you respect? I'm me? putting on, and and I just know you're not going to pay me. Yeah, that's the hardest thing in the world. Yeah, but to read do. the room though. Like G, read the room though. This is not. This would be his third contract if he was to get a new contract, right? 
So the Guardians paid him once. He's been in this organization long enough to know how business is done here. He's seen guys like Francisco Lindor come and go. He's seen other guys that, that could have been star players come and go in this organization. To me, you see Corey Kluber come and go. You've been around long enough to, to read the writing on the wall, right? Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be going home in my feelings worried about the Guardians won't pay me because I know this organization. I've been here for a very long time. Let me go out here, handle my business, make sure I'm being the best pitcher I can be for the Guardians while I'm still here with the mentality of, okay, even if they don't pay me, I done put so much good tape out here that somebody still will. Yeah, ultimately he's pitching for a paycheck. Yeah. And so, but the thing with Bieber is, and this is tough for pitchers because their arms do go and injuries happen. He's not going to get paid for a season and a half. Mm. So he can't be injured. He can't have a major injury. That will cut into his potential earnings big time. So, when so if I'm the Guardians, I might go to him. And I might say, I know they tried. They, they made an offer before last season, I think. Go to them one more time and say, this is where we can go. Now, it's probably not going to work because he's going to get 30. He, he's probably going to be in the ballpark of 25 to $30 million. And I don't think the Guardians will pay that I don't think so for either. anybody. The Guardians' mission statement is, we're a team that, has, that will go as far as our young players and maybe one veteran can carry us and that veteran is Jose Ramirez they bet on Jose long term he gave them a team friendly contract it was one of the few times in team history that a superstar and Jose is a superstar came up for a major contract and stayed instead of left this is going to be this is the grand experiment can you win in Major League Baseball with that mission statement taking your your has it worked so far you do your one one veteran or one guy and, a, and there's a bunch of young guys that that can play up to that level. Yeah, it's yet to be seen if that works. It hasn't worked for 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 this team. yet. Yes, um, but if they do I wouldn't be surprised if people pivot that way. Well, um, the I Rays would, have come close yeah. Yeah, to doing it that way. Um, it's just it's all gonna it's it, it'll figure itself out. But here's the thing. Look at the standings on July 20th. I don't, if they make a decision before that, I'm going to be very disappointed. Use all the games that you have to make the decision. If someone blows your doors off with an offer, I mean blows your doors off, like the haul we got for Frankie, because that, that deal was incredible, then you might have to do it if there's seven and a half games between you and the Twins. But if you're where you are right now on, on July 25th, so a month from now, month and a half from now. If you're right where you are, you have to remember what they did in September and you have to understand that this team can duplicate that. And so if, if you trade away a, a, an all-star, you're robbing this fan base of a potential October run. And we're thirsty. We haven't had one. So every time you get a chance to get on that dance floor, take it. All right, McNuggets.